Hey there. Okay, today I am gonna be embarking on a journey, a long, mildly epic journey, uh, if mildly epic can be a thing. I feel ill-prepared, but this is the concept. I want to rent a cabin in the woods. I want to be there with one or both of my daughters. Uh, my husband will hang back and manage the animals on my suburban homestead, uh, which is basically 30 rabbits and a neurotic dog. Uh, it's a very rustic, very old cabin. It has a huge indoor fireplace. It has an outdoor fireplace. And I want to dress and cook and do and be everything from a particular time period. Which time period? I'm not sure, but I'm trying to let the things that I have on hand dictate what that looks like. So I have this Butterick pattern here. I have no idea what part of history this is from. It seems very prairie. It seems very pioneer. I'm not looking for historical accuracy here. I am really just looking to have fun. I have always been interested in living off grid, in old fashioned living, living off the land, etc. And this will kind of give me a, a little bit of a taste of that lifestyle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this dress. I would like to use dark, drab fabrics, but then I have this fabric. And for some reason, this is just screaming out to me. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're just gonna trust the process. Okay, let's take inventory of where I'm at so far. Uh, first, if you see dark spots all over my face, uh, I actually have mud or clay rather on a bunch of zits. I am experiencing a large breakout right now because I've been eating too much sugar and dairy. My husband brought home some Ben and Jerry's cherry flavored ice cream and a girl's gotta live. So I'm dealing with the repercussions, but I love this stuff and it's just natural clay and I put it on my zits and I go about my day. And honestly, I prefer looking at the clay on my face to the zits on my face. I don't know how you all feel about it, but that's my preference. So I'm sticking with it, my video, my preference. With regards to the actual dress, um, it's not really reading prairie to me. Not yet. Maybe it will. So I have one sleeve on, one sleeve off, 
and I'm working on the buttons right now. The buttons are coming along nicely. This finished edge here, it's nice and crisp, and a lot of times I struggle with that. The offset sleeve is kind of fun. Uh, most of the sleeves that I'm used to sewing are kind of right up here, and this actually falls down the shoulder a little bit and then has the poof. What I don't like about the sleeve, though, is there's no cuff. And I just find that it's really kind of loose and not flattering when it gets to my hand. And I could picture myself trying to do work in these sleeves here and then just kind of like hanging and getting in my way and just um, getting wet all the time and you know depending on what chores I needed to accomplish. Now I know I could roll them up but you can do that with a cuff too and you can also look fashionable and good. So I think I'm going to take a leap of faith and try to put in a continuous lap and a slit and a cuff like I learned on one of my previous shirt projects. And hopefully I can do that with the sleeve already assembled because I'm not undoing it. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully I don't ruin this project. I am not into the tie in the back because A, when you look at this pattern, there's an apron with the pattern. I'm not gonna make that apron. I'm gonna make a cuter one in my opinion. I actually wanna do a, like a full length apron, something that covers the top and the bottom. I think that that would be really cute, but there's already a tie in the back. So if I tie the apron in the back too, that's gonna be really clunky. I tried this on my daughter and I'm going to scale this down and actually just just remove the ruffle and I'm gonna make her a matching dress. I'm gonna to try to use a different fabric for her dress and then maybe her dress can be my apron and my apron can be her dress and we can kind of mix and match and have this cute little samesy thing going on while we're living on the prairie. I'm getting really excited about the whole concept. This flap here, I have no idea what to do with that. We're gonna make that up. I, I don't understand what the instructions tell me to do. Reading instructions is just whoosh, I do the best I can, but I am a visual learner, and I know that they supply pictures in the instructions, but it's just not good enough. It's still too confusing for me. So with this, I think I'm gonna literally just kind of fold it under and put a little square of fabric over it and do a little X through the fabric. I've seen that on garments before, and maybe it's other confused people who don't know what they're doing. No, I know it's part of the design. Um, they intentionally do it. I'm gonna copy that and cover a mistake. Oh. I had an epiphany about why I needed this dress to be bright. I love neutrals and natural colors. I also like bright colors, but I don't tend to wear them a lot. This dress needed to be bright because it needed to be hopeful. It needed to be upbeat. And think about it, if you're going to embark on a unknown potentially dangerous, potentially deadly journey out west, leaving the comfort and knowledge of your home base, leaving your friends behind, uh, leaving all support systems and just venturing out into the unknown, you absolutely need to be surrounded by thoughts of hope and the color of this dress is just happy. If I had made a black dress or a brown dress. You know, these are serious, more somber colors, and I just don't think that they evoke the same kind of hope or optimism that a pink, purple, and white dress evoke. Now, I have done really well with matching the plaids. I'm super excited. Down the front of the bodice, I've matched everything almost identical. On the side seams, not so much, not at all, to be honest. Maybe one day I'll get super focused and fiddly about trying to match all the plaids on another garment, but for now, I'm stoked with what I have here. So I'm getting really excited. I'm gonna finish this project and I will see you in the reveal.
woke up this morning thinking about my grandfather. He actually is a pioneer in his own right. He left his family behind when he was a teenager and moved to America alone. He came to this country as a stowaway on a ship and he made a life for himself here. It's such an inspiring story. He's one of the most amazing people that I've ever met. He was incredibly independent, individualistic, hardworking. He helped raise me. My mom was a single mom with three children, and so we lived close to my grandfather, and he would be over my house every day, uh, or I would be over his house all the time. He would tell me the most amazing stories. He was so adventurous. He accomplished so much in his lifetime, and it's funny, you know, as I get excited for this small little trip that I want to take that kind of recreates some of the experiences and or hardships of living off the land. I'm just thinking of him. He always tried to do everything himself from mending his own clothes to cutting his own hair to making his own food. He was just a very inventive and awesome person. As I'm renting a cabin and doing a lot of these things with my daughter, I'm gonna be thinking of him the whole time. I really like that connection. It's special for me. Okay, let's just get down to brass tacks. I give this dress a seven or even six out of 10. I think the silhouette is really flattering. However, I just don't think enough is going on to really keep me interested. Another factor at play might be that this particular fabric doesn't really resonate with me. I know I told you that I was gonna trust my gut and choose this fabric and then I had an epiphany as to why, but overall I just don't feel incredibly comfortable head to toe in this particular fabric. If it was a different color or if maybe I kind of mix and matched and had the sleeves a certain color or the cuff a certain color or even certain patterns various colors I think there would be enough interest for me to make this dress pretty much a 10 out of 10 I think that having this apron here which I borrowed from my daughter uh, really is necessary because if this was just straight pink purple white plaid head to toe uh, no interruptions of color or concept it's just a little underwhelming. So overall, I think that the dress was fun to make. The ruffle at the bottom was really necessary for, you know, an interest factor, but it was a headache to make. There was just so much fabric. I honestly feel like I used an entire spool of thread just to attach the ruffle to this dress. Between first stitching through to be able to gather it all, to then actually stitching it to the garment, and then zigzagging the edges so it didn't fray, and then hemming it, I mean it was just an exorbitant amount of material to get through. So I went ahead and I added cuffs. I think it really, really enhanced the design. I needed some distinction between waist and shirt and sleeve and cuff. And so these various pieces that kind of break up the monotony of this long piece of fabric and give it shape and design are crucial to keep the garment mildly interesting. I think once I make the apron that goes over the top and the bottom, it will really add a, a bit of a wow factor to it. I think it'll also help place it in a date and time. Speaking of time, I really didn't have enough time to research when this dress might have been worn. And honestly, I don't really think that it's a historical reproduction. I think it's more of just a costume that I picked up. However, for me, I, you know, the actual history component is not the focus. I'm just trying to evoke a feeling, and this dress very much has, like I mentioned previously, a kind of like pioneer and prairie vibe, and that's what I'm sticking to. I want to rent that cabin and have my daughter and I kind of dress a little bit old-fashioned and really partake in some old-fashioned activities. Those are the types of things that really interest me and always have interested me. I love self-sufficiency. So I just want to thank you if you've made it to the end of the project. As you know, I love hearing your feedback and comments, so please post below. I promise to get back to you. If you've enjoyed this video, if you could like and subscribe, it means the world to me. And I can't wait to see you 
at my next adventure. Bye!